but that's the whole museum then, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, so that's the go all the way to the end. No, nope, those are offices. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. sure. We ended up with some uh, special guests today. These are people who worked with Arnold back on many of our early projects: Michigan Consolidated Gas Company. Fort No, and they just came by to Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne. They came to see the museum, and so uh, we're running a little late because they came. Hey, gentlemen, I have a seat. So I'll leave the door open in case we get any other stragglers coming in, but. Uh, Thanks to everybody for coming to our first museum studies brown bag, I guess is what we'll call it for now. Um, uh, this is John Franco Cataldo, am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes. Yes. Um, who has started um, volunteering here at the museum with us, and it turns out he has a lot of previous museum experience um, uh, working in Italy, and so I asked him to come talk to us a little bit about the work that he's done there, so we can learn about the way that other people have been putting together their exhibits. Um, and next month we're going to have another presentation. Um, Dr. Bray is going to give a presentation on an exhibit that she's put together um, with some colleagues in Spain. Um, so we can also see a little bit about how that um, was put together. And I'm open to other ideas, so if there are other people you want me to try to bring in here, um, or things you want to hear about, let me know and we'll try to do more of these. But I'm going to let John Franca take it away. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. And uh, so when, when I received the first email from uh, Megan with the object brown bag, uh, I, I, I thought that it was a mistake. I, I, I didn't know what brown bag was. So uh, I checked the eyes. I said, OK, maybe had, she has lost a, a real brown bag. So, so uh, I, I checked it. And uh, then I read the email. And I realized she was talking about having same sort of seminar, little presentation about well, nobody my has a brown bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about my yeah, it's about my experience here uh, in, in in Italy, and uh, because we had a talk and conversation the first time we I entered the museum, we I visited the museum, and so we had this uh, kind of conversation, and uh, I talked uh, her about my experience in an Italian multimedia museum. So I said, okay, let's do it, uh, let's, let's try it. And so before starting this brown bag uh, seminar, I want to thank Megan for inviting me, and uh, of course all of you for being here today. Uh, I'm not, a, I have to be honest with you, I'm not a specialist in museology, I'm not an expert in uh, management of art collection, uh, I have a, a master's degree in uh, communication for a public institution. Uh, from the University of Salerno, and um, actually I am a student uh, in, a, in the Wayne State University, I'm uh, uh, getting a master's degree in French. But uh, the goal of this uh, little presentation is uh, to show you a foreign, a foreign experience in a multimedia museum and uh, give you a, a suggestion maybe, uh, while seeing this uh, next slides can give you a suggestion for the anthropology museum from a different point of view. And uh, I lived in Italy up to, to uh, 2017 and uh, in Italy I had a lot of experience uh, in many uh, cultural activities. I had the opportunity to develop my skills in many cultural activities. So in 2010 a group of friends start to think about the idea of uh, building up a sort of a, a cooperative society, a little company, uh, in order to uh, gather the competencies and uh, to work in the art field and in the promotion of the territory. So the name of the society is uh, Nova Civitas. Uh, it's a Latin word that means new city. And uh, the, the, the EUR Foundation is 2010, and uh, I was the president of that uh, society for a year before coming here. Uh, we start the creation of art events in Padula. Padula is a small city, I'll, I'm going to talk about Padula later. And uh, 
we made some exhibit of the local artists, and uh, then in 2012, we had uh, the opportunity to set up um, an exhibit about the Czechoslovak uh, scenario here is an in in internment camp. Uh, we had uh, we, we knew that there was a story about the, Czech the presence of the Czechoslovak soldiers in the charter house of Padula. So we set up we set this uh, exhibit about the, the their presence in the charter house of Padula. And uh, it was a, a great experience. It refers to the First World War. It, it was a great story about the alliance between Czechoslovaks and Italian army. So we were proud of giving light to this story that was a kind of unknown. And uh, after that, we uh, participated to a public call by the municipality of Padula about the managing of uh, a civic uh, museum of Padula. So we presented a, a project and uh, our project was selected and so we start this uh, new adventure. But before going deeper on uh, in the, my personal experience in, uh, in the Italian museum, I, wanna, uh, I would like to show you some important statistics uh, about the current situation of a museum and uh, other attraction in Italy. So, in Italy, in 2017, uh, 2016, uh, there were 4,158 museums, 282 archaeological sites, and 536 monuments. In total, it's a big number for, uh, for Italy, it's uh, 4,976 uh, touristic places and uh, the average is one every 12,000 inhabitants. It's a big, big number. And uh, 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 in uh, Italy, uh, in, uh, we can see here that uh, there is, um, the, in 1998, the archaeological sites and the areas were 364. Then, 10 years later, there were 400. And in 2017, 472. Uh, of these, 210 were museums. So there is a, a between uh, in uh, 20 years, there there are the difference of more, over more than uh, 100 museums that are museum directly managed by the state. Uh, we can see from this chart. That uh, refers to data from the Ministry of Cultural Heritage and Activities and the Tourism, that uh, Italian uh, sigla is uh, um, MIBAC, Italian Economy. And uh, we can see here in the, in the upper part that there is a, a, a great uh, growth of the numbers of income. So um, it refers there is a growing effect starting from 2014 to uh, 2017. And uh, as it's possible to uh, read here, there is a huge uh, growth in the last part and the, 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 the amount of the increasing is uh, plus 110%. Instead, in, uh, from 2018, uh, sorry, 2096 to uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2009, there is uh, a growing that is just 10%. So in the last part of the year, in the starting from 2014, there is a, a huge increase of income. And uh, as we can see here, there are some factors that I considered that I found very interesting in order to explain this kind of huge growth. And uh, the first one is uh, uh, the so-called Sunday at Museum uh, initiative. This is uh, consisted of free access to state-managed uh, and archaeological sites uh, that are free um, just the first Sunday of every month. Uh, starting uh, from the 2009, the, there is a, a decree that will increase 
the amount of days of access of free access so it will be uh, from uh, 12 to 20 and there will be other days that are would be available to the directors of the museum that can uh, kind of uh, have this disposal and they can uh, kind of modulate them in, uh, throughout the years as they want. And this is a huge factor. And um, there is another one that is the, called the Week of Culture. It appears that it was an initiative that took place starting from 1998 to uh, uh, 2012. And uh, this Week of Culture was an initiative promoted in, uh, by the Ministry of uh, Cultural and uh, Heritage and Activities and uh, Tourism um, that uh, the initiative consisted of uh, 10 days of free access to the museum and so there were people were able to go to the museum and uh, they had this opportunity uh, two, uh, every two years. Okay, so every two years the people had this kind of 10 days free and they enjoyed to go in, to, in those manage, state managed uh, museums. Um, another factor that I consider is uh, uh, European contribution to the preservation and of the cultural heritage and the creation of uh, new museums. There are a huge amount of money. It's uh, the budget, the official budget is uh, about 490.9 uh, million euros. That's a huge amount of money. And uh, there is a part that is uh, fin financed by the European, uh, European uh, Union and the part is co-financed by the nation. So there is a co-founding co in that. And, uh, it, it belongs to the strategy that is called the 2020 strategy. And uh, the last one I consider is there are a, a tons of uh, private initiative as discounts for uh, groups and there are um, art cards that I consider the art cards is like a membership card for the museum and archaeological sites. And uh, this is a huge factor too. Uh, Museum and archaeological site we were visited this uh, last year by uh, over that uh, 55 million people, and uh, there is a, a huge difference between 2017 and uh, 2018. There are more than five uh, million people, so it, it, it's a huge number, and uh, uh, this data is for both the paid uh, entrance and the free entrance. Uh, in a uh, sorry. Uh, in a recent uh, statement, the Ministry of Culture uh, also showed where what the most visited uh, local area were. So uh, the first place is obviously uh, the Municipal Coliseum, the Foro Romano and the Palatina area that are an increase of. Uh, of 8.73%. Uh, the second place is taken by uh, the archaeological area of Pompeii. The third one is the uh, Uffizi Galleria and Vasari Corridor in Florence. There are the, the fourth place, uh, the Museum of Turin, uh, the Palazzo Pitti in Florence, and the Boboli Gardens in Florence is the fifth place. And then the sixth place, the sixth place is, is taken by the Grotto of Catullo, of Catullo and Ecological Museum of Simeone that is in Brescia in the Lombardy region. Uh, in the ranking of uh, the 30 most visited sites in Italy, there are eight are located in Lazio. Then we have six in Campania, a region in the south of Italy. Then we have three in Tuscany, four in Lombardy, three in Pi Piemont. In two in Veneto and one in Puglia, in Puglia, in Venezia, Giulia. But what is the other side of the coin? Uh, Istat, the Italian Institute of, Institute of Statistics, revealed that 69% of people over six years of age have never set foot in a museum over the past year. Then Istat says also that 75% had have never been to see an exhibition 
and 80%, a huge number of that, never entered an archaeological site. Uh, so I was wondering, uh, why is this negative trend? Okay, we had a huge amount of people going to the museum, local sites, for, you know, for the, the site. And in another site, we had this negative trend. So uh, maybe I was wondering if there are some bias, so uh, stereotypes about the museum. And uh, I, I, my, my answer is at the end of the slide, maybe there is a possible solution for this kind of negative trend and uh, we, we're gonna discover that. Uh, in this slide, we had the most visited uh, places in the Campania region, so that is the region in the south, that the region where I belong. And uh, the first place is taken by archeological aerial Pompeii, of course. The second one, the, the park of Capo di Monte. The third one is Royal Palace of Caserta. It's a uh, wonderful uh, palace, royal palace that uh, resemble the Versailles one, yeah. uh, National Archaeological Museum, then we had the archaeological area of Ercolano, the archaeological park of Pesto. Uh, there are other places that are visited too, Anna Capri, uh, we had the Castel San Telmo, uh, Museum of Capo di Monte, Museum of San Matthew. And la I put the Charter House of San Lorenzo, that is the Charter House that is present in the place where I used to live. And uh, the presents are 1991,000. Uh, uh, so maybe uh, you are wondering, okay, we talk about Padula, but where is Padula? What, what's the city? Okay, Padula is in the south of Italy, as I said, and uh, belongs to the Campania region, and is uh, three, 166 kilometers away from uh, Rome, it's about it's uh, reachable about uh, three hours and 40 minutes by car, and uh, uh, from Naples the distance is uh, was 164 kilometers and it's uh, reachable about one hour and 51 minutes by car. Uh, one negative data, one negative factor uh, of uh, the Anos Valley, that is the valley where Padula belongs is the absence of train connection. So we are a kind of penalized by this kind of absence. And this may be one of the factors that explains why Padula is not, has not this huge uh, access of uh, visitors. Um, as I said, Padula belongs to the province of Salerno. The province of Salerno is one of the uh, 15 small towns in the uh, Valle di Anos Valley that we can see here, this is a valley between mountains. And uh, Padula has around 5,000 inhabitants. And uh, in the summer, you can reach uh, 9,000. Uh, Padula is well known for the Charter House of St. Lawrence, and it's a, the greatest Charter House in Europe. And uh, it, is the most important charter, charter house in the, for, for an economical point of view uh, of the south of, the, of Italy and uh, it's a, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So in 1999 we received this uh, title as the UNESCO World Heritage uh, Site. It's enormous, it's, a, it's an incredible place and it's very important. So it's the main attractor of the world. Then inside the Charter House of Padula, we had, we had this archaeological uh, museum of Western Ocania that was founded in uh, 1957. Yeah. Yes. Okay, inside the exposition, we have more than 600 uh, evidence from uh, the 10th century before Christ at the 6th, uh, 6th century uh, Annus Domini after uh, Christ, belonging, belonging to the area between Padula and Sala Contina. Sala Contina is another small place that is close to Padula. And uh, in the deposit, there are more than 19,000 19, pieces that were, uh, they came to light after a long period of uh, excavation. Uh, we have Padula, also the Baptistery of St. John at Pont. Uh, 
Ponti. It was founded around the late 4th uh, century and uh, it represents uh, the, one of the most ancient settlements of the uh, Christianity in the late antiquity. Um, in Campania, this is uh, the first uh, Campania, and this uh, has been built over an old pagan temple uh, dedicated to Lerotea, and uh, it has been property of the Charter House of Padula for many decades. In Padula, we also have the museum of surname, it's a rarity. Uh, this was founded by uh, Michele Cartuscello in 2012. In the middle of the economic crisis, uh, um, a, a restaurant owner, owner uh, Michele Cartuscello, he is uh, a restaurant owner, he decided to uh, turn his passion for genealogy into a real world. So he uh, stopped having this restaurant and he switched, switched to uh, a museum. And he started, in a short time, this became a real job, an alternative job. And uh, the, this place was uh, called the Museum of his last name, of his surname. And the people from all over part of the world came to Padula in order to uh, find the origins of their uh, family. Uh, they discovered something interesting you know, about their past. And so it's a unique example in Italy. We don't have any other museum like that in Italy. Uh, there is also a permanent exhibit of the presepi. The presepi is an Italian word that means a nativity in scene. It was founded in 1994 by the Pietro Gallo Association of Presepi. Uh, every year before Christmas, uh, local artists gather together and they create a huge nativity in scene um, following the uh, Napolitan roofs. This is a tradition that comes from Naples. Uh, and this is inside the church of Sant'Agostino, as you can see here from the photo, this is a church, and in the church there is this exhibit. The church <coughs> is not longer used. And uh, the scenes are, are very unique, and uh, all recalls the old uh, art of the cre creation of a nativity scene. Then we have the museum, oh sorry, the museum of uh, Petrosino, the Petrosino uh, Museum. This was inaugurated in 2017, uh, 16. Uh, this is a unique museum in the world because it's dedicated to an, an Italian American police officer. Joe Petrosino was named, uh, was born Giuseppe Petrosino. He was born in Padula in uh, 1860. Uh, and uh, he went to America, he became a famous uh, police officer, he was the first to, fall, uh, to fight against the Mafia, the, common, uh, the criminal organization that was called the Black Hand. Uh, now we, there is a Stephen Taylor who wrote a book about that, and uh, we, there will be a movie about the story of uh, Giuseppe Petrosino, starred by uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, one of the other movies made about that incredible hero, and Petrosino was the, a New York City police officer that uh, was a pioneer in the fight against mafia, so he invented some new kind of uh, uh, strategies in order to fight the, uh, the Black Hand organization, the criminal organization. And uh, this is very important, and this museum is a half traditional museum, as we can see here we have the, the the habit, the coat he wore, this is a, belongs to the New York City uh, police uh, office. And uh, we have also uh, the last part, the upper part is an old multimedia, multimedia part. So we have a, a screen, interactive projection that uh, tells the story of the job. And we have in Padula also the Civic Museum on Padula. Here we are. The, it was inaugurated in 2014. The museum uh, is housed in, in an old house previously owned by the family Brando, and uh, it was acquired by uh, the municipality of Padula, in, uh, and then it was uh, transformed in a, a museum. And uh, it's 
it's divided in three sections. The first section is about, as we can see, in archaeological discoveries of Valdiviano. There is a second part that is dedicated to the story of the people that fought uh, for the unity of uh, uh, the Italian nation. And the third one is dedicated to the uh, fight against the brigantage, the brigantage again, uh, of the, uh, after the Union of Italy. The museum is, uh, uh, allows people to enter the room and is conceived as uh, the home of a virtual erudite man who was a collector, so this is the, this imaginary uh, owner of the, of the house that uh, inv invites the people to come to the museum and show what he had collected during his year of, uh, of permanence in, uh, in this house. Mm -hmm. So he collected, uh, you, cannot, you cannot find any object, the real object in this uh, museum, in this house, but it's uh, plenty of wardrobe closets that are uh, technological, so you can open the drawer, you can, you can push the button uh, to this uh, wardrobe here, the closets, and you uh, can learn the stories of the Padula by uh, listening and watching those uh, video clips. And it's an interesting experiment that took place in a small town like Padula, so it, it is uh, an exception for the, our territory. And uh, so this uh, virtual erudite, erudite man uh, is the talking voice during your visit. You can have both a third guide uh, visit or you can have a kind of uh, treasure, treasure uh, hunt, you can start your trip in the museum and you can easily go through the rooms and through the closets and you can start your uh, hunting. Um, another particularity of this museum is that together with the, uh, put together different branches of uh, knowledge as a uh, archaeology, uh, anthropology, history, geography, and uh, in order to make a sort of a multidisciplinary uh, framework for the visitors. And uh, the museum mixes the unknown stories of the small town of Padula and the Valle di Liano with the national story. So that's why the title of this uh, brown bag, Little Stories and, and the National Story. Uh, in fact, in the last part, in the, sorry, in the second uh, plan, we had the story of Carlo Pisacane and his expedition. Carlo Pisacane was a, a socialist hero of Italy before the Union of Italy. He came to Padula, he was killed next, in a, a small town next to Padula, it was called uh, Sansa, in uh, uh, 1857, and he was considered one of the heroes of the Union of Italy. And so it, it, is a, it was a national history, and Padula crossed the national history in a certain time of uh, this evolution. Uh, let's see the structure of this uh, museum. We had the, the property that is the municipality of Padula, then the management uh, for three years, starting from 2014 to 2017, has belonged to, to the Novaci Italian Cooperative Society, and then we have the sort of governance. It's, I call it called governance, but it's sort of a, a scientific direction. There's a committee uh, formed by professor of, United, of University of Salerno, local teachers, ex experts. They gather one uh, one time a, a, a month, and so we sort of connected with them and suggestion for the uh, developing of the management of this museum. Uh, as I said, the collection of episodes is one of that, one factor that uh, represents this uh, civic museum. Uh, and as I said, these uh, little stories are nothing special. These are uh, stories that can uh, belong to other uh, cities uh, of the south of Italy. So, Everybody that goes there can listen to the story of Padula and they can connect to the, their own histories, little stories. And uh, the, the characters that play those stories uh, are, can be considered as a mirror of the main 
national events. So every national event reflected on local history. So that's why uh, we found interesting to have this museum. Uh, the three floor, this is, a, uh, as I say, the three floor, three floor structure and they're renewed with the uh, European contribution. Uh, it's meant to be a private, uh, private house uh, with the Davis Mansion and the Herbivite Man. And uh, uh, as I said, as, as many factors that uh, build, were built up in order to make this as a unique piece for the entire territory. Um, in the last uh, section, there is an important uh, factor, there is an important uh, show. Um, there is a, a, an interactive trial, and so people can sit, listen to the trial. There is a judge in the middle, interpreted by an actor, and there are the witnesses that are also interpreted by other actors. There are the sites for for Carlo Pitacane and uh, the sites for the enemies of Carlo Pitacane. So we, you can listen to all the stories and there and this is, this is, this is a judge in the, in the middle and at the end of the trial, after being, after heard all the, uh, the kind of witnesses, you can decide if Carlo Pitacane did right or not. And so at the end, you can vote the final verdict, verdict of the trial. It's kind of, you know, nice thing. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to show you some photos here. So there is two visitors here next to the closest. And uh, this is a, a visit by a student. This is my sister, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we had both kind of uh, experience. So private experience, you can visit the, mu the museum as you want, or you can be guided by someone. Uh, so. These are the main activities that we had during the three years. Um, we had the maintenance of, the, obviously, the maintenance of the museum. We had to clean the museum. We had to book reservations. Uh, we had the tourist guide and the info points, so people can also call call us in order to have information about uh, other attractions in Padula. Uh, we had special openings in the night and during the holidays, such as uh, Christmas, uh, the first day of the year, Easter, and there was no, no closure for the museum, especially in the first year. And um, then we had uh, uh, conferences and uh, presentation of uh, books in the museum. We, uh, in the 2016, uh, we hosted an international uh, Italian-Canadian writers' conference. And uh, we had a huge presentation in the museum. Um, there are the, there is also the realization we we realized uh, we create a website of the civic museum. Uh, we had uh, part of our uh, members uh, collaborated in the research of uh, brigantage in the south of Italy after the unification. We had we had a great job, a great job about that. And um, there, there was also a collaboration as uh, actors for some video clips used for both the museum, for museum of Civic Museum and uh, Joe Tosinos one. So we went to Rome, we went to the Cine Cinecita place, and uh, we took part of the cast of these uh, two uh, documentaries that were used in the both museum. And uh, as you can see here, there are all the photos we had. Guy, this is me while presenting at the conference of the Italian Canadian writers. This is a, the, one of the photos taken from the special opening in, during the night. And here in the room, these are two members of our uh, little society. So we cast, we were casted, and uh, we had this uh, uh, this kind of participation. It was a great experience too. Uh, what what the technologies were in the museum? Uh, the first floor, there were there were uh, video projectors connected to DVD readers. Uh, the videos were activated through buttons. So in the first floor, we had this uh, kind of uh, floor, this uh, kind of door. The, the, the host of the house, this Herbert man that uh, is uh, introducing the house, is uh, uh, presenting himself, and he invited people to. To, to 
to proceed uh, with uh, the path in the museum. Then we had video projectors connected to mini PC with the open source uh, OS, uh, OS um, operating system uh, Android. In the second floor, uh, we had more closets with the Apple PC connected to screen. Uh, in the trial, in the last part, we had five screens in series connected to six Apple PC, all connected by a central Linux and speaker. And uh, it's, it is, uh, was a good, good job because you had also some buttons and, uh, next to your seats. You have to switch uh, yes or not, so you can have both buttons activated by people. And uh, in the basement, we had video projectors connected to Intel NAC and the Bright Sign Basics interactive players that allowed the people to push in the, next to the, the wall and to activate different kind of uh, explanation and different kind of stories. Uh, I have here a little example of uh, the little video. It is in Italian, I'm sorry, but I, I could not explain that. Uh, you want to listen to it. We are going to listen to it. Four times. Okay. Il museo è valente di dibattito critica, il museo civico multimediale, una struttura tosta nell'ex casa grande, acquistata dal comune nel 2002 e progettata a servizio di date multimediali sulle dinamiche storiche locali e sui personaggi ripresentati grazie ad attrezzature interattive all'avanguardia. As you see in the, the, the judge I was talking about in the center that was in, uh, started in the trio. And uh, then, uh, as you have seen, there is also a part of that uh, made uh, as a puppet for the children. So it, it was both for adults and for children that can enjoy the stories of the uh, brigands, of the, the, the villains, let's say that. Uh, so my answer, my question is, uh, why cre to create a digital museum? And uh, I, I had this answer, uh, answers that maybe could be a reasonable need for explain why to create a digital museum in a small place uh, that you know is a kind of uh, far from the great attractors, and uh, so develop and share stories through new channels is one of these uh, one of the reasons that is uh, that is worth to create a digital museum uh, set some are attractive places for all kind of users so we had uh, this negative trend i was talking about in the beginning of the presentation so uh, having different kind of channels help people in to be bold and uh, so even for fools uh, would never go, have go to the museum. And uh, also one of the new technology is to, one of the purpose is to enhance the interactive experience while visiting a museum. So it's not in the museum, in a digital museum, you are not, uh, it's not um, made and it's not meant to have objects, but the object is totally virtual, so the interactive object, object, and the main focus is on the stories. Stories are the the, the most important thing that people want to, to, to know about uh, a museum, not just to visit that and have you know like a pictures of the, of the object, but having stories behind object. Object as a starting point to talk about stories. Um, and it's useful for me to have digital museum because it could be possible an integration of images, text, sound, photograph, all together. So it's important to have this kind of digital content. Um, one of the last uh, slides is uh, new technologies for new museums. So I was uh, watching 
was uh, browsing on the internet and I found that there are different kinds of technologies that could be available for visitors. And I found very interesting the beacons that are small devices that uh, using the Bluetooth technologies can help uh, visitors to have uh, messages on their phone. And that could be a kind of a new form to have an interaction, a different interaction between the museum and the visitor. Uh, then I realized that in many museums, even in, in Italy too, uh, there are augmented reality that is one of the new frontiers, one of the most uh, uh, interesting frontiers of the technology. So using those special glasses, you can have an interaction uh, with uh, virtual uh, object inside the normal rooms, in the real rooms. And I found also interesting uh, the apps for mobiles. This is a new uh, trend um, from, and I found interesting the experiment of the National Archaeological Museum of Naples that have created uh, this application that is called Father and Son. And this is in the history uh, of a man who was working uh, in the National Archaeological Museum of Naples and uh, he died and he give he gave a letter to his son saying okay I've been working there and the most part of my life maybe I didn't dedicate the time to you and your and my family but I want you to know what I've done here so the story of this game starts with this letter and the, the, the guy the, the, the son of this uh, employee uh, start to learn what his father was doing in the museum and he, you can play and you can learn the stories and uh, what is about uh, the museum is about just playing it with your phone and it, it has reached more than 7 million downloads in the first two months of, uh, uh, of its uh, uh, activity so this could be kind of new impulses, new suggestions for the museum and uh, as I said to Megan, maybe the anthropology museum can be enriched in, to using those kind of technologies and having a sort of a collaboration between different in, different uh, departments and uh, have a, like a, a, a different blend, uh, blender of uh, uh, interdisciplinary uh, content and, uh, and uh, contribution. So this is a little bit of my experience in Italy and I want to thank you for being here today and uh, if you have questions, uh, I'm more than glad to answer you. Thank you. I would say that if I saw an app called Father and Son, I would not do anything with it. Okay. It seems incredibly exclusive, you know, completely like half the population is left out. I mean, that's just a comment. Okay. <laughs> and, and I had a question too. Would you guys, the digital aspects of the Museo Civic or however you want to say it, um, is it, did you go digital, digital and virtual because you didn't have objects? Are there no yes. objects there? Yes. Okay. It was conceived because we, as a, you say, um, we had an archaeological, important archaeological museum in the Charter House of Padula. So in the Charter House of Padula, you can see of real objects that belong to the, the era before Christ. So we had the opportunity, the municipality of Padula had the opportunity to buy this uh, house by a European contribution. And uh, it, this was made in order to try to attract people, not only in Charter room, so the visit was not belong uh, related to the visit of uh, one hour or two hours in the charter room, but it was a kind of idea to get the people uh, in the historical center of Padua. So the ideas were we can have a multimedia digital museum and uh, without object, and it was a unique experience in, uh, in the 2010 when it was. Uh, Build it up, and uh, yes, it was a kind of how to make a museum that be make this museum evolving, and the digital technology come to our hands.
I was just curious if you had things and you weren't using them. No, any kind of objects. So this is completely digital uh, there are soft closets, uh, there are soft screen, talking screen, and uh, you have just one object is just a table where you have this mouse and you can uh, discover the stories of the CDs of the ballad piano, but everything is made by uh, technology. So it's a closet and inside it's the, just this mouse. Did you break down the visitors? Like, are they mostly from locals? Or are they from Italy or EU? Or yes, in general, we work with schools. Okay. So uh, in general, our main uh, visitors were schools, students from schools. But we had uh, many initiatives, many uh, openings. Uh, so we invited uh, professors uh, before coming before uh, having the students. And uh, we also had uh, uh, the conference of Italian writers. We had uh, uh, a thematical entrance. We start of inventing uh, thematical uh, events, let me say that way, uh, for to di diversify the, the coming of the visitors. So the, the, the general visitors were from Campania, where local visitors are from Italy. So Campania was where the most visited, the, the most visitors come, came from Campania. Then we had uh, Puglia, uh, so regions that are uh, on the boundaries, and uh, a lot of visitors from uh, uh, the Lazio. And uh, we had also uh, a lot of uh, people coming, uh, people that were in other countries of the world that uh, had uh, some uh, regions in Padula, so they came with their families, mm -hmm. and so they enjoyed visiting this museum that it, uh, it never existed before in uh, Padula. So it was a kind of new uh, impulse, yes, in Padula. Yeah. A technical question. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, where are you keeping all those computers? Are they like in the closets or in do you have closets. a room that's yeah. for computers? So these okay. closets were made by panel mm -hmm. and in, in the inside of these closets there were just tables made by wood and there were these computers all connected mm -hmm. and uh, everything. You, you could not see what was inside the, the right. closet. Yeah. You just had buttons, mm -hmm. a little mouse and you can start could start this uh, uh, interactive uh, stories with uh, the closet. Did you guys have any trouble with upgrades and software issues? Uh, we were following, uh, so we had assist assistance from the, the company that uh, won the public call. So we had uh, the assistance from, from the, this external society that won the public call okay. for Twitter campaign. But we had a I, I, I work as a, a technical assistant in a computer company, mm -hmm. so sometimes I, I, I solve, I fix some problems, little problems that I have, and so we are uh, able to overcome this kind of problem. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. It's really great. And um, one, I just had one more thing I was interested in. Um, the idea of the uh, treasure hunt, I think, is really appealing and I wondered how you guys went about that and uh, what kind of responses you had from it. Uh, it was an idea. Um, there were uh, some periods, so I remember, so sometimes we had not a, enough to guide to the deaths. So we had to split the groups because the, the house is uh, three floors, but um, the interaction and uh, the av availability for some kind of closets where it's related to two people. So we were kind of forced to invent something different in order to have uh, the complete independence of the groups. Mm -hmm. So we started, well, okay, why, why don't, don't we try to, to let the people without guide? So in the first year we had, all, all visitors had a guide because they paid for the tickets because it was like three euros for the ticket and they, they had the right to have a guide. So the guide was not paid, uh, was paid in the three uh, euros. But we started, okay, 
maybe we can try to give a, 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 an alternative option to the people who were visiting the museum. Maybe some some people don't want, just don't want to be guides, just want to visit for by their own. And uh, the, we, so we put some uh, uh, piece of information inside the closet. So they opened the closet and they could find it's sort of uh, indications, sort of a suggestion to, to proceed. And so we, we had a, a good impact on that. People, uh, I, 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 I dare to say that people were 60% in favor of the tourist guide, so uh, guided by a, a person, this person, and 40% that we prefer to to have this kind of ratio. And uh, I have to say, children, obviously, children love to do that. Mm -hmm. So children love to open by herself th this mm -hmm. kind of treasure and follow up the story through the suggestion that we put inside the closet. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of mm -hmm. different uh, approach. Yeah, this, I gotta go, but this is super cool. Um, kind of new concept. It's not really a museum. It's kind of, it's along the lines you're describing in Santa Fe and it's called Meow Wolf. Hmm. I don't know if anybody's heard of it, mm -hmm. but uh, you might just check it out online. And it's the exhibit that they constructed is called the House of Eternal Return. And it's completely unguided. I mean, it's a crazy place and you can go any which way but there's clues in all the rooms of mm. this constructed house. And, and so you can follow, you can make your own story, you know, or you can maybe get, you know, a little more guidance if you want, like you're suggesting, yeah. but it's really an immersive experience. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's gone beyond what you guys are describing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Well, thank you. Thank you yeah, thank for coming you. here. Megan, I was going to say you can just move the, the setup if you want. Okay. I think I'm the next one. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah. I will. Thank okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I made a note for you, too, while we were talking. Um, something else that we should look at, thinking of how to tie this in augmented reality with classes. Mm -hmm. um, the University of Illinois created an augmented reality archaeological excavation. I saw information about how they were doing it when they had a whole room laid out where oh, like okay. students were like with the headsets on, okay. but they were with the uh, HoloLens. Um, I don't or remember if it was HoloLens okay. or if it was a different. I'll find the information on it because okay. it was in my alumni newsletter. Okay. And I was like, and I just hadn't thought about that in a while. Yeah. Um, I wondered sort of. But it would be a good thing for an intro class because intro classes don't get to go. We have yeah. specific classes where we excavate, but it was a way to get them actually seeing what it's like to yeah. actually try to excavate. Yeah, it's interesting that we put augmented reality to 